So we were talking about exceptions to the octet rule in class today. And I'm going to work through number three from the worksheet you got, which is nitrogen dioxide. And we're going to start by drawing the Lewis dot structure for nitrogen. Now nitrogen has five valence electrons. And I'm going to draw them like this. I know we gave a specific order in which to fill these whenever we did Lewis dot structures originally. But because I'm working on bonding now, these are all moving around anyway. And I prefer to draw it this way because it makes my bonds a little bit uh, easier for me to work with. And I have to draw my two oxygens, the nitrogen dioxide, which each have six valence electrons. And it's really easy to see where some of these bonds are going to come from. Okay, I'm obviously going to end up with a bond right here so that my lone electron on the oxygen, my unpaired electron, and my unpaired electron on the nearby nitrogen um, can pair up. And then I have the same situation here. And then these two at the bottom can do the same thing. So if I go ahead and draw this now, I'll have an oxygen with five valence electrons unpaired and a single bond to my nitrogen and a double bond to my other oxygen. And this is how we can draw the Lewis structure for nitrogen dioxide, but it's not the only acceptable way to draw it. In fact, we have to draw the resonance structures for this one. So this is one way. Um, and you'll notice it does violate the octet rule because if you count your valence electrons, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight on this oxygen, so that one's good. On your nitrogen, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, so that one's good. It's the last oxygen that doesn't quite uh, add up to eight. And with that last oxygen, the one on the left, we have two from the bond. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay, so we do not have 8 there. And the reason that occurs is because we don't have an even number of electrons. We're going to have an odd one out. And uh, this is one of the ways that we're going to draw it, but we can and we need to also draw um, the other uh, forms of it. So we're going to draw the resonance structures. Get the color off there. Okay, so I could, instead of having it look like this, where I have my single lonely electron here, I could take one of these from the nitrogen and move it over there. And I could have my lone electron on my nitrogen instead. Um, in bonding, you have transfer of electrons. You have them all kind of moving around in the same area. So you don't have to draw the, the lone electron on this oxygen, although it is acceptable to do so. So one of my other um, resonance structures look like this. And that is um, valid as well. Okay, but I would also have another way um, to go about and draw um, another resonance structure. So I could also move that, um, that last um, unpaired electron to my other oxygen. Okay, and if I did that, I would be taking um, one of these electrons here and then moving it up there to be paired with that one. And that's fine also. And if I do that, it's going to look like this. Now, these are not necessarily equally valid. Um, some of them may be better representations of this molecule and how it actually exists than others. But at this point, we have not discussed how to do that. And that's not something we tackle in pre-AP chemistry. It's something you do in AP chem with formal charts. So if you plan on going to AP chem, you'll get a little bit more information on that. Um, but these would be your resonance structures. And yes, you need to draw all three of them. Um, and you need to have them separated by the double-headed arrows that we talked about today in class. Okay, but that would be how you draw the Lewis structure for nitrogen dioxide, and all three of those should be drawn on your paper.